What's up guys, I'm Random Frank P, and it's real, not just a render, it's not a scam. This is the Beast X. It's lighter than the Razer Viper Mini Signature Edition, and it's half the price. Now there's been a lot of questions about this mouse. Not just is it a real product, but how it stacks up to its obvious competitor with the Razer Viper Mini Signature Edition. So we'll check it all out for you guys today, talk about the build, specs, features, how it felt while gaming, all that good stuff in case you're interested in the brand new Beast X mouse. So checking it out when you first get it unboxed, it's actually a pretty decent sort of first impression. They do have a few different colors to pick from, so right away you'll be met with this magnesium alloy mouse with a raw looking silver finish to it like I have here. It is cold to the touch due to the materials, and yeah, you know, it looks like all the renders we've seen online the last few months, mimicking that very polarizing design from Razer, which is really how the hype for this started to build and build. But you probably also spotted the other thing inside the box. That's actually the 4K dongle. This is by far the biggest receiver I've ever seen for a gaming mouse. It's like laughably too big. It's the literal size of a Rubik's Cube, but to their credit, this does have some extra bells and whistles to it, like RGB strips on all six sides, and a built-in display for things like showing your remaining battery life, the DPI, your polling rate. You can also show GIFs and images, but we'll show more of that later on. You may have also noticed when I first took it out was there is no feet on the bottom of the mouse. They give you a few different sets inside the box, so you can choose from having two large feet or four smaller ones in each corner, and you can pick from PTFE or glass skates inside. So I personally still really dig the feel of glass skates, so I opted to go with the four small skates on my unit, but I do like the fact they give you an option to set it up to your liking. But let's be real, you're here because you want to know how the Beast X mouse stacks up to the Viper Mini Signature Edition, right? Design-wise, it's that same aesthetic and same magnesium alloy material here, but there are noticeably more cutouts on the Beast X, and the lines are a bit rougher to the touch versus the very smoothed out and refined feel from Razer. Now in terms of specs, Razer still has the obvious edge I'd say in terms of their technology and precision with their optical switches and sensor, but this does tip the scales nearly 10 grams lighter and like I said before, half the price. This weighs just over 40 and a half grams, which is still just wild to me. Like I know mice are getting lighter and lighter, but 40 grams is impressive. Razer is still extremely light, all things considered, but it is about nine grams heavier versus the Beast X. But again, I mean, they're both under 50 grams still. So just put that into perspective. In terms of size, this is obviously on the smaller end of mice out there, and it does come very close to the dimensions of the Signature Edition, but as a small symmetrical mouse favoring the likes of fingertip or claw grippers, it all comes down to your hand shape and size for how it'll feel to you. Now, one of the things you have to be mindful of when buying a mouse this light is how it feels during use and if it's battle tested. So we'll do a sound test of the Omron micro switches inside, as well as the squeeze and rattle test that we do for these gaming mice. So as you heard, this does have some noticeable flex and give to the shell of this mouse. Now, is that practical in the sense where that's what you're gonna be doing during normal use? No, but that is something that us reviewers typically do when gaming mice come out to show you how these new lighter constructions really hold up with pressure and force. The most give was definitely with the plastic base underneath the mouse. That started to cave pretty easily, but that's also pretty common on these lighter mice with less reinforcements to their inner shell. And just for you know example here, the Signature Edition has that same amount of flex and give underneath. And since we're still comparing things, we'll do a switch sound test now between the two mice so you can hear the audible differences between the two. So 
So yeah, the Omron switches are very, very light and metallic sounding versus that of the sort of deeper sounding click on the Razer Viper Mini Signature Edition, which is funny because Razer's always been known to have a very light, crisp click to it, but in comparison, this is extremely light and metallic sounding. Now, that's one of my main takeaways with this Beast X mouse so far, is the metallics to it. When browsing or gaming, I do tend to slightly lift my mouse up and sort of readjust. And the sound of that every time is annoying. There's this noticeable metallic clunking sound towards the top of the mouse, mainly underneath the left and right click paddles. It doesn't misclick or sound like anything's loose inside, it's just probably that inner alloy on alloy contact inside the mouse that could hopefully be fixed in future units. Sensor wise, we have a Pixar PAW3395, goes up to 26,000 DPI, 650 IPS, and supports a 4K Hertz polling rate, as it should with that massive Rubik's Cube receiver. But no complaints for the 3395, it's still a widely used and trusted sensor out there. Now, when it comes to gaming and putting this to use, I played mainly at 800 DPI at the 2K Hertz polling rate. I know there's a massive debate going on right now on whether 2K or 4K is worth it, whether it's purely placebo. It's tough to say with the limited amount of tests out there right now, but I game at 2K because it does feel noticeably smoother to me. Again, is that real or is that a placebo to me? I don't know, but it does feel better, so I stuck with that. And 2K drains battery less than 4K does, so yeah. The battery inside is a 300 milliamp hour battery. It depleted about 5% an hour, but charging it for around 10 to 15 minutes gave it 20% boost, so you can get a few hours just at about a 10 minute charge. I've had no issues or latency complaints that stuck out to me. Lift off distance felt fine, even though it's adjustable in the software anyways, so no technical hiccups. Now, I say technical because the issues I'm having are tangible with the Beast X mouse and really just how it feels in the hand, especially versus the Viper Mini Signature Edition. I really think the main culprit is the finish and machining done on those cutouts. It's so smooth on the Signature Edition and on the Beast X, it's not like sharp or jagged edges where it's gonna cut you, but the edges to the cutouts just aren't smooth enough. I also mentioned that, you know, the metallic clinking sound, and while there's no paddle shift or play, my left side buttons have noticeable wobble to them, and just by placing my thumb on it, they move way too freely, and as a result, adds just more noise to the already noisy mouse during use. Switching things over to take a look at the software, very rough as well. The main tab is where you can reprogram what the buttons do, even though it's not really evident. You have to click on the mouse to do that, even though it looks like a render. It seems very all placeholder to me, but the advanced tabs where you're gonna spend the majority of your time adjusting your DPI with the eight saved presets. Uh, you can also adjust the DPI in increments of one step, but just how precise that actually is, not 100% sure. You have your lift off control and your slam click prevention, which by default should definitely stay on. We are gonna have a ton of misclicks. In the polling rate selection on the bottom, again, adjustable all the way up to the 4K Hertz polling rate. The next tab is macros for assigning macros to your mouse if you're all about that. And then the view screen tab for configuring your Rubik's Cube. Here you can change the color and the effects of the RGB on the receiver, as well as change up what's actually displayed on that screen. So again, by default, it's your battery, DPI, polling rate, and the clock. All very useful things to, you know, catch at a glance. But you can also have it be a picture or a GIF displayed on here as well. It's full color, so you can really put up whatever you want on this little display. Fair warning though, I would avoid GIFs. Uploading this just line wave GIF took 22 minutes. So yeah, not ideal. Let's not forget the quote on the bottom of the software that reads, in me, the tiger sniffs the rose. No? So here's the thing. For half the price of the Razer Viper Mini Signature Edition, if you need a mouse this shape, this size, this weight, it's really not a bad option. The problem is the inevitable. When you directly copy the Razer Viper Mini Signature Edition, whether they like it or not, going forward, it's always gonna be compared to this mouse. And the reality is, WL Mouse is not Razer. The Beast X 
is not and will never be the refined and polished with leading technology with their sensor and their switches Viper Mini Signature Edition. So I feel like when you try to blatantly copy one of the leaders in the mouse market, you have to give it your best shot, put your best foot forward, and WL Mouse did not do that with this Beast X mouse. There's too much creaking, it's too metallic, it's just not as refined as this probably could have been. And don't get me wrong, you know, competition is always good for the consumer in the end. So for future batches and releases, I hope they fix those issues because this has a lot of potential. But right now, I just have too many physical issues with it. And again, when you compare it to how refined and polished this is, it's not one to one. But if you're willing to overlook all those faults, for that price, again, for half the price of the mouse, if it's something you're looking for, maybe you could overlook all those issues if it helps keeping some more money in your wallet at the end of the day. So guys, that'll wrap it up for my review of the brand new controversial WL Mouse Beast X. Hope you all enjoyed. If you wanna check it out, I'll have a link for you in the description down below. If you like this review, give it a big thumbs up to show your support. Feel free to follow me on X at randomfrankp. And last, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Hope y'all enjoyed, have a good day.